And this is this is interesting to bring out. Mm -hmm. What we're dealing is an issue of the mind, mm -hmm. right? This toxic stress that took place from these from these aces, and it's changed the brain development mm -hmm. of these individuals in, in, in such a way that it affects their attention, their decision making, their learning, and how their body and mind respond mm -hmm. to stress mm -hmm. to, to 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 pain. I mean, that's stress, right? When we're in exactly. pain. That's it's very stressful in the body. Welcome to the Pain-Free Pathways podcast. On each podcast, we will explore effective natural methods to alleviate joint and muscle discomfort. From expert interviews to the latest research and practical tips, we're here to help you find relief and reclaim your active lifestyle. Let's discover the power of natural healing together on Pain-Free Pathways. Hello and welcome to the Pain-Free Pathways podcast. This is a podcast that is de dedicated to holistic health and wellness to help you to live an active and productive life. I am Adina Verrett and I am your host of the podcast. And today we have a special guest, Dr. Dana Philosaint. Hello, Dr. Dana. How are you? Well, thanks for having me. Very well. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Thank you for being here. I know you're a busy woman. And um, so I'm just very privileged to have the opportunity to speak with you. Now, Dr. Philosaint, she is a uh, social worker in background. She has her bachelor's in social working. She has her master's in social working. But she also has a doctor of, doctorate of philosophy in educational psychology. She has 24 years of experience in the mental health field, and she's helped numerous individuals overcome trauma in various settings like hospitals and schools and churches, homes and military bases. And she's an author. She has written my daily pill devotional, The Working of This Mind, Quick Mental Health Guide for Trauma, and she is the co-author of the mental, uh, mental Health Curriculum for Youth. Now, additionally, she does do childhood uh, child counseling. And so she has a series entitled Emotions Are Up and Down. And when I saw that, I thought we probably need an adult version of that as well. <laughs> but she uses this resource during counseling sessions to help children to manage their negative emotions appropriately. Now she has a practice. She is a director of Mind Care, which is Childhood Trauma Therapy in Somerville, Georgia. And there, her mission is to help individuals turn their trauma into testimonies. She trains and counsels both adults and children to be overcomers, not just cope, but to overcome. And her, she's very passionate about pointing people to Christ who is able to restore and heal our minds to be like his. So again, I'm very excited to have you here. And hopefully this is going to be a, a very informative discussion um, with the audience. And so I know people are probably wondering, okay, mental health, counseling, you know, what is the connection to this pain uh, platform that we're kind of speaking from? And so what we're going to be addressing is something called ACEs, which are adverse childhood experiences. So just as a kind of background, can you give a little bit of explanation of what this is? Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I might share a screen with you guys so you can see it as well okay. um, but a few years ago i think back in 1997 there was a physician by the name of dr Felitti. he um was he had a a weight loss clinic and in his weight loss clinic um he would help people of course lose weight but in the process um, he would recognize that they would lose all this weight and then all of a sudden the year maybe a year later they would gain all the weight and then more. Mm. So he was kind of confused by that. And so he started doing some interviews with them. What he found was astonishing. Together with Kaiser Permanente and other groups, they came up with a study to see what happened in their childhood, these people's childhood, that would bring them to where they're at right now. Mm. And what he discovered um, that uh, they call it the ACEs, which is the Adverse Childhood Experiences. Um, and the study was called The Relationship Between Childhood, Ex uh, Childhood Abuse and Household Dysfunction and How It Can Lead to Causes of Early Death in Adulthood, okay? And so mm -hmm. with that, these were the nine or 10 ACEs that he discovered 
that mm. many of these individuals had experienced abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, or sexual abuse, neglect, physical or emotional, household dysfunction, like, you know, having someone in their home that had mental illness, mm -hmm. mothers were treated violently or divorced homes uh, and substance abuse and incarceration of a relative in their home, right? And the result he saw, they were more likely to, to, to lack physical exercises, more likely to smoke later on in life, more likely to become alcoholic, drug users, miss work, and then suffered from obesity, diabetes, um, depression, suicidal attempts, and STDs, and heart disease, and you know a whole lot of, of, of illnesses because of their early on life experiences. And then he saw that the more ACEs that they had, or the more childhood experiences that they had, negative childhood experiences, the more likely they were to have multiple of these behaviors or mental health or physical health concerns later on. Wow. So that was the study mm -hmm. of the ACEs in a nutshell. Um, but the result, the, res the summary, and then I'm gonna uh, kind of let you tie into the pain part because I think that's important too. Um, mm -hmm. The result he said that he found was the ACEs had a, can have a lasting negative effect on one's health, well-being and even opportunities. And then it concluded by saying that these experiences can increase the risk of a wide range of chronic diseases and leading causes of death, such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and even suicide. Wow. So that was the conclusion and the finding of that, uh, that wow. study. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very, very sobering. And, and I guess the thing too, is that it's interesting how something like this a person is even isn't even aware of the effects that it's having that, that it's even in the backdrop of their yeah. life and their living and so they're having all this trouble <laughs> and you know a lot of times we we just don't we just kind of think oh this is just life but right. it's actually stemming from something way back down you know the years so that's that's Correct. pretty that's pretty powerful and, yeah. and and again this was something that um i guess i came across this because when I was doing a presentation on pain, mm -hmm. I, in my research, I was like, mm, because of patients I had, I said, there's, there's just, something's not right, <laughs> you know? And sometimes I would ask questions and I, and there were some cases where I couldn't even, I couldn't even get to what really happened, but I remembered, I, I have one lady in particular and I still see her face. And she literally, her tears, she welled up, her eyes welled up and she, she couldn't even verbalize. But mm -hmm. what she tried to tell me was she had dealt with it, but yeah. her body was saying that she hadn't. And the mm -hmm. freshness of that emotion told me that she hadn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why, I, so I'm going to share a little bit about what I found when I did this, this research. Yeah. And I'm going to share my screen here real quick. And then we're going to go into... Okay, a little bit more about what we need to be looking at here. Okay, so what I found, I apologize, I should have had this already set up. <laughs> okay, so this was actually a systematic review, a meta-analysis by the British Journal of Anesthesia done between uh, 2009 and 2022. And what they found that there was a strong association between adverse childhood experiences and chronic pain in adulthood. And they were saying that adverse childhood experiences should be considered in the patient assessment and early intervention to prevent adverse childhood experiences may help reduce the genesis of chronic pain. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm seeing people after it has burst. <laughs> but if we're knowing that this is an issue, then we can you know, start to address this early on. And they were saying further research, research into assessment interventions um, are needed basically to learn to address these uh, early on in the process. Then this was a study, this was uh, 2022. And they showed that there was a prevalence of adults that suffered chronic pain that had high level of ACE experiences. And so there is an 84% um, uh, statistic, I guess, that they found 
reporting that at least one ACE had been experienced. So the different things that you listed, yeah, you know, they at least had one of those factors. Now, that was interesting enough. But then when I looked at the numbers of this, I was like, oh, my goodness. So they said that incidence of chronic pain doubles in mm -hmm. individuals with ACEs as compared to someone that has no ACE. Now, right. again, high number to me, but I also like numbers that show me a little bit more of the stats. And so with this same report, they were saying that the statistics emphasize the higher occurrence of childhood adversity in people living with chronic pain. The prevalence of individuals that have chronic pain uh, conditions related to ACEs increases the healthcare utilization. And that's because there's poor adult physical and psychological health. Mm -hmm. And this creates a societal burden. The figures suggest that the total annual cost of loss of productivity due to in ill health and high mortality as a result of these ACEs have been estimated at 580 billion in mm. Europe, which is a lot, that's in Europe, a yeah. lot of dollars. And in North America, it was it's $748 billion wow. that's coming from loss of productivity, productivity and the cost of care. Mm. Now, as a physical therapist, that staggered me because we deal with a lot with back pain. And you see mm -hmm. below here that the financial burden of productivity loss and absenteeism totals 225 billion for employers in the United States, which is a large number. And when I saw that the ACE number trumped this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a huge problem. And it's not mm -hmm. something that is talked about. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you find that as you're going around and sharing what you do, but I thought that was just very sobering. and. So again, that's why I have you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so, I'm gonna, this is this is interesting because it's it's we're combining the physical with the mental, right? Exactly. And ultimately, we want you to see the spiritual too. Exactly. Based on what you said, and this is this is interesting to bring out. Mm -hmm. What we're dealing is an issue of the mind, mm -hmm. right? This toxic stress that took place from these from these aces. And it's changed the brain development mm -hmm. of these individuals in, in, in such a way that it affects their attention, their decision making, their learning, and how their body and mind respond mm -hmm. stress mm -hmm. to, 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 to pain. I mean, that's stress, right? When we're in exactly. pain, that's, that's very stressful in the body. Mm -hmm. And let, let's look at a picture of what the brain actually looks like for those individuals with a healthy brain. And those who had an abused brain, who, so who experienced some kind of trauma. You can even see the difference in just looking mm -hmm. at the brain, you know, of how, what areas highlight uh, in, in a healthy brain. And those areas tend to be shut. Certain, certain areas in the brain tend to be shut. Like I'm not dealing, when we look at it in a, a, PTT, a, a PET, PET scan, right? Mm -hmm. You can see the difference there. So we see the difference. So what is it that we're telling ourselves? What is the message that is that we're conveying or what that we have accepted as a result of these um, ACEs? And that's making us, you know, incapable of healing from pain or or like seeing pain as a thing to avoid completely. Like what what comes to mind for some individuals? Um, and I don't know if that's a question that you want me to answer, but yeah, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed so okay. ultimately if we don't deal with these things right and then you know so, so the, the studies is showing that ace can actually lead to death right so what is the mindset if a person experienced pain one of the things one of the devastating um misconception that they have in their mind is my fault so mm -hmm. they carry around this idea that whatever happened it was my fault so i'm to blame you know, mind mm -hmm. you, they were children. They, they were not at fault at all, right? Mm -hmm. They were absolutely um, not the cause of what took place in their Sin is absolutely the cause. In addition to that, the enemy uses people to cause, to inflict pain upon, unfortunately, children as well, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the idea that they have. And then when they start marinating upon this idea that it's my fault, what happens? Their brain is supposed to be developing, but they're they're coming to the point that they're saying, I can't do anything right. 
right? They're in school. Mm -hmm. They give up very easily, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to sit. They can't sit. They can't. Their mind can't focus to study, to learn, to process, um, to apply. And so there is this disruptiveness in the neurodevelopment of a child or, or of the individual as they're growing up. And then what happens? You know, with these studies and then their 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 schoolwork um, showing that they're incapable. Right. Most mm -hmm. of the time we start putting diagnosis upon kids. Right. They have mm -hmm. ADHD. Oh, mm -hmm. something's wrong with you. You're bipolar. Um, and so they they start living with these social, emotional, cognitive impairments um, that then they convert to this is who I am. You know, who mm -hmm. am I? They're searching to find out who they are. They're seeing themselves in light of, well, you are someone with living with PTSD. You are a bipolar individual. You are a schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. You are, you know, so they have now tied into more of this this mindset of. I'm a nobody. Mm. They don't understand who God says that they are. No one is, is showing them that, you know, their past is not their future, that God is going to take that situation and, and, and make it turn into something beautiful. They're not seeing all of that. All they're seeing is I am rotten. Something's wrong with me. I'm a depressed being. There's nothing that can happen that's going to be positive in my life. Right. And then ultimately, this is where it gets really bad. They start to adapt to unhealthy, uh, unhealthy um, behaviors or unhealthy, you know, risky behaviors, things mm -hmm. like alcohol. I'm going to start, you know, medicating my own self um, mm -hmm. with, with drugs and, 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 or even do things that get them sick or even get to the point that they injure their bodies, right? They've injured their backs, they're injured, you know, and then of course, physical therapists come in and various individuals try to help them to, to gain back the strength. But do you think they're taking it and saying, yes, I can do it. And with all the cheerleading that you guys put on, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be like, yes, of course, I can. My strong, my muscles are gonna get stronger with the work that you're helping me with. No, because mm -hmm. their mind is already wrapped around their incap uh, and th their incapability. I can't remember mm -hmm. the word, but, right? Mm -hmm. Their inability to do anything good, their inability to grow, their the ability to to develop. Mm -hmm. That's what they have. So then their idea of I don't care anymore. I've given up, right? Like stop, stop trying to tell me that I'm going to be better. I'm not going to get any better. Look, I've been sick for a long time or, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing that you know I can do. You can, you, I'm sure you've heard these messages. Oh my goodness, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All the time. So you then you can see how the ACE does tie into you working with someone on a physical level mm. because the mindset was already programmed to receive only nothing but negative. Here you are trying to cheer them on to do something positive. They have identified themselves as their trauma, right? Like mm -hmm. I am an abused person, right? right? That's who I am, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm forever going to be a, a, a bipolar or die, uh, whatever. It is, if, 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 even diabetes. I mean, you might want to mm -hmm. put that in there. Any disorder that comes in or uh, bodily dysfunction, things are not working properly. They have given up hope. Mm -hmm. And the message that they tell themselves carry forward into their bodies. And mm -hmm. so you see a slow recovery or no recovery at all. You mm -hmm. see no responsiveness to, to all the work and effort that you're putting in. Mm -hmm. um, and then as a result, then you have diseases. And so they start feeling, I, I really just don't feel well. And then they right. get in right. result, death, early death, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. wow. That is something. So that is something. Yeah. yeah. Very, very sobering. And so when you're dealing with people and... I mean, what, first, let me ask you, because this is a very interesting aspect of mental health, okay? And um, I mean, I have questions about, like, how do you get people to become aware? But what what led you into this this um, specializing in this part of mental health? Because this is very, yeah. very much needed. Mm -hmm. Right, it is, it is. So my focus is trauma, obviously, right? It's, it's right. trauma-focused um, therapy-based. Uh, because what I've learned in, in dealing with people with, um, things like depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. um, those are symptoms. All those things are symptoms of something. Mm -hmm. deep. So people often carry around in their minds about a trauma that happened to them and identify themselves as such. Um, and they carry that with them everywhere they go. And of course, mm -hmm. their minds are then become depressed. Of course, their mind feel like they can do no good mm -hmm. or nothing's going to happen that, or that's going to be positive. And anything, you know, that could happen is going to be negative right the anxiety starts kicking and kicking in about the future right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, specifically my when i was a child my my dad um was was um stabbed 
And I went, I saw it. I saw him pull. Oh. I mean, it was horrific. Um, and then his response, how he responded to the trauma mm -hmm. changed the course of my mindset because mm -hmm. he was telling people while in the event and he's trying, you know, survive and everything else. He was comforting people saying, oh, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. People were crying, you know, crazy. Like it was crazy, of course. Oh, right? wow. Okay. And, doing this around, and he was calming people down. What I learned, um, and I'm going to show you this slide because this is important. What I learned from that and then various things later on in my studies is that our response to trauma makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. It's not the trauma itself. itself. While the trauma is bad, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's nothing, and I'm saying that it's, it's like, oh yeah, it's good. No, 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 no. The trauma itself is bad, but look at the definition of trauma. Trauma is an emotional response to terrible events like accident, abuse, neglect, rape, and, and all those things. And, and so when we respond a certain way emotionally, then it causes us to have long, it can cause us to have long-term reactions, things like unpredictable emotions, flashbacks, um, restra a strained relationship, right? Or physical symptoms that impacts our health. Mm -hmm. So the way we respond, especially the very time that these trauma happen or the people around us, if we're children, mm -hmm. let's say you're a child, mm -hmm. right? And then you go to your mom um, and you share with your mom, mom, this thing happened to me. This person sexual abused me. How did your mom respond? Mm -hmm. Did they respond like, oh, don't say anything like that, da, 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 you know, and, and, and become defensive of the other, in, other individual, mm -hmm. i.e. their spouse or their stepdad or what, you know, whatever. Or they, they like comfort. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be with you. How, how they respond then can lead to the response of that child. Mm -hmm. Or let's say nobody responds appropriately. Let's say they try to show that something is wrong with them. Children don't necessarily verbalize, mm -hmm. but they will act, right? Mm -hmm. Did you see okay. a change in your child's behavior? Mm -hmm. Did they mm -hmm. change from one way? Because you know your child, right? And then all of a sudden you start seeing them acting a different way. How did you respond? Did you did you retaliate with like going out on and screaming and yelling and, and you know, anger? Mm -hmm. Or did you say, what's going on? Let's pray about it. Let's, let's, let me, let, let's seem to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. right? There's changes happening. Mm -hmm. What's happening in your life? What has taken place? Tell me about your friends. Tell me about you know, your class. Tell, tell me about your teachers. Tell me what's happening in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Our response make all the difference Okay. when it comes mm -hmm. to trauma and the long-term effect that you're dealing with as a physical mm -hmm. therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and so to answer your question, mm -hmm. how did I get in this field? You know, I have had friends, um, people that I know that have committed suicide. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you mm -hmm. see these things happen, you start really questioning what is the mm -hmm. efficacy of what mental health counseling do? It does it really work. Oh wow. Right? They had been and, in counseling. I, I, yes, some of them were, right? <gasps> and and it's, I mean it's a long story, but I, the, no, the, sorry. Yeah. the, yeah. the oh, short yeah. version of it is we have to get to the point to I had to get to the mindset mm -hmm. of learning. And then there was a point where I, I left the field because I just didn't, just didn't think that it was working. I mean, mm. it was a lot. Okay, okay. But when I recognized that God had called me, number one, to help people dealing with trauma, mm -hmm. number two, that we cannot leave him out of the equation for them to be well, and mm. number three, we must also deal with the physical of that person. In other words, healing comes when we deal with the person on a physical level, mm -hmm. on mental level and on a spiritual level okay that's healing does occur right wow. so all those things had to be taken place for okay. healing to take place. and so okay. that's how i kind of got into it wow. and the more i got into it the more the lord was impressing me yep this is what i want you to do yeah. i think what i saw was a focus on just one aspect who we are as a human being right mm -hmm. so yes we're mental and so there was a lot of just emotional talks uh, oftentimes when we go to counseling you know we're talking about what's how is how are you how do you feel how does that mm -hmm. make you feel the feeling and the feeling and feeling and we the focus was just so much on the person's feelings now if they have a bad feeling right. all we do is highlight more of that feeling more and more. Yes, it does help sometimes to talk about it, but it doesn't bring closure. It doesn't bring healing. It doesn't bring, you know, make us a whole being because our minds are constantly, or I should say our body are constantly looking to see what, how do we act mm -hmm. based on how we think, right? Right. right? So 
diseases in the body are not healing as fast. Our bodies were meant to be healing, you know, in, in the way that God designed it. But if we constantly feed our minds with negativity exactly. or tell them the stories over and over again, we have things like, uh, and some people might find it like something to, to try, but EMDR, for example, reliving the stories over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. All we're doing is trapping people and the toxic stress that they lived under for years. Right, right. For right. Years. Yeah, that's very powerful. And, yeah. and, and that, but that's the kind of the way the system has been, you know, yeah. again, when right. I look at even within our, the world of physical therapy, you know, it is, it is changing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's behind times, um, yeah. you know, so we tend to just look at, oh, you have shoulder pain and, and even within the, the, the world of physical therapy itself, I've always been a therapist that said, well, your shoulder, yeah, it hurts, but we've got to look at your neck. We've got to look at your mid back. We've got, to, I've always, you know, looked at all yeah. of those areas, but you know, a lot of times we are pigeonholed into just saying, okay, can you lift the shoulder? Is it weak? Yeah. You know, with shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. The person sitting here and complaining, oh, my neck is killing me. I can't sleep. Yeah. I'm getting headaches. I'm like, oh, but the shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. So that's kind of how the medical system handles things. So mental right. health, physical health. So that's, that's very, very true. And so yeah. it, it's, it, it has to be inclusive. Definitely. It has to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned. When yeah. we start inclu including everything of who the person is, is. their relationship, their social being, mm -hmm. their, you know, I, I mean, are they going out and being part of a community of people? Right. We are mostly connected, right? Whether it be in a church, which is highly recommended, mm -hmm. but, you know, to be part of society is part of who we're supposed to be, right? right? So the community, our social being, our physical being, our mental being, our spiritual being, mm -hmm. all that we are must be in line with the healing that God desires us to have in our mind. Very good. Right? Very good. So when we're talking about physical health, we really are talking also about spiritual health. We're mm -hmm. talking about mental health. Very we're talking good. about all things that the person is so when we talk about mental health we're talking about the physical health so it's the whole person that we need to constantly look at so mm -hmm. when we talk into a person and somebody might say why are you talking about teas by the way i make teas and and, and we um we mass produce uh teas to help people with with mental uh for for physical health oh, really as for for stress for okay. sleeping problems, for depression, and anxiety. Why? Why are we talking about teas? Well, because we're, they're all herbs that actually help the brain too, right? Mm -hmm, so there's mm -hmm. that physical component. And guess what? You know, there's a lot of people who know that. And that's what they're, you know, banking on um, the pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. a lot of times. They stay on like, I need my drug, I need my drug. How about we start first with natural exactly the natural person that we are mm -hmm. um so then I'll, I'll when i have a little chance i'll share a little bit more about um you know herbal teas and everything else too that we do our books and stuff but you, you understand we have to start mm -hmm. taking people not just saying like, okay let's talk about it mm -hmm. what other things can they do are they exercising right are exactly. they i mean if, if they're not exercising the mind we know that our mind does better when we exercise, exercise. the body the physical body respond mm -hmm. um a way that's healthy for our brain as well, right? right. So Very we can't true. just talk to the person about, you know, oh, let's, let's talk to, tell me about your feelings because <laughs> it's not all about feelings alone. <laughs> yeah, it's a dead end. It's a dead end approach, you know? And like I said, I like the fact you, they get trapped in that. Yeah. Okay, there's no growth, you know, there's no, there's no healing, growth. you know, that's it's right. just rehashing, rehashing, you know, re ruminating. And then there's right. no one anywhere. Yeah, no. and I appreciate something you said too, because you said that, anxiety and depression are symptoms yes and are. yeah and it was interesting because the it's almost you know I tell people like when you're dealing with pain it's like layers on an onion <laughs> you know it's like you deal with one layer and then there's still something that kind of shows up but it's interesting because I did a talk about the healing mindset and there were mm -hmm. seven mindsets and depression and anxiety were one of those mindsets that kept the person from coping and, and healing from pain yeah. but even just the, the way you're saying that the, the depression and anxiety are a symptom, we treat depression and anxiety as the diagnosis. Right, right. And it's just, yeah. it's still another symptom. So just yeah. like the, the pain, the burning and the aching is a symptom of something that's been damaged tissue wise. Right. So anxiety and depression is a symptom that right. emotionally damaged. That's right. 
Yeah, right. and so that, that was very we, powerful. I appreciate that. If we get stuck on just depression and anxiety, then right. we won't have a, a need to ascertain the cause. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, well, the cause is my depression. Well, mm -mm. okay. Well, it's just depression. <laughs> but where do we go with that? Right? Exactly. Okay, well, then the only place to go is medication. Because all we're doing is saying it's a diagnosis that needs to be treated with, you know, something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like okay, that I got you. Yes. Right. That's definitely so, it. And that's, and I, that's why I appreciate that because then it kind of takes away that, okay, what is a, we can't say cure, you know, <laughs> what is the thing to repair? What creates the recovery? And then it lets us go to, a, again, the source and then dealing with right. the source, whether it's something that has externally happened in combination right. with, like you're saying with the herbal teas, the changes that have happened in the brain because of the trauma you know, in that's the right. first place. So that's, that's very, very powerful. Uh, and I know a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions um, when it comes to, you know, anything that has happened to them that's been negative and that they're mm -hmm. supposed to stuff it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because you mentioned that about even a child coming and saying something and they feel like that's their, um, that should be their safe place. You know, that should be where they yeah. can go and have the, be investigated. But then how many things, like I said, are, are happening like that? But the trauma is not, and I know that there's different kinds of trauma. Do you have any, like, what other kinds of trauma are there other than yeah, exactly. the, the ACEs? Since we're on this topic, I think it needs to be expanded. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So when we when we look at trauma, right, most of the time we, we talk about the ACEs because that's the one that's been studied. Right. But if you think about it, trauma is anything that I call traumatic. Mm. That I've, uh, you know, emotionally... Um, respond in a certain way that became trauma. Okay. Right. Okay. So people may, in, 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 in let's go to like for grade school, for example, there are people who are being bullied right now. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And it's very painful to some. And some, some adults might say, well, I was bullied. I mm -hmm. didn't respond. Well, that's you. And your definition of, of what hurts pain, you know, is different from that individual. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've had individuals who, too, you know, will have experienced sexual abuse. I mean, very, very bad, right? Mm. And they're, they're, let's say they're siblings. And one person might act one way and the other person might act a different way. Or they might have had, you know, an alcoholic parent. Okay. Or two alcoholic parents, I should say, right? Mm -hmm. And one person will act one way and the other one will go the other. What made the difference? Mm. Why is it different? Well, because I have now defined, I see it painful for me. Mm -hmm. Right. We're created different. We're built different. And so it's really hard to just say this is trauma. This is trauma. This is trauma. Okay. It's what is trauma for you. OK, it's a list of things that could be trauma, tra traumatizing mm -hmm. that can, can lead itself for me to becoming depressed or have, you know, flashbacks and all those things. Mm -hmm. Things like abandonment and things like even pain. Mm -hmm. Right. If you experience physical pain that can lead to a sense of like, oh, my word, I would never be well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or rejection or accidents or, you know, being hospitalized. There are people who are literally afraid to go to, to the hospital because they as associated hospital to death. Oh yes. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's things that you can see what is my interpretation and mm -hmm. how I approach certain things and my experiences in life will then define my, what is trauma, what is not, and what really I can it could have been traumatizing, but it's not. Mm, okay. Okay. And, and this is an individual interpretation and, you know, everybody is made up differently, you know, so like some people, they cope um, better and they, they just find healthier ways of coping. And yeah. this is where I know a lot of the, you know, cause you just might have a proclivity, you know, just because if it's like you're saying with the alcoholic parent, if the parent was alcoholic, especially if that mom was an alcoholic when they conceived, yeah. then for one child, it's like they could fall into that same thing that causes mm -hmm. causing trauma, but that is the coping mechanism that they go to. That's their go-to. Right. That's all yeah. they see. Hmm. And then yeah. another child may just take a totally healthier, different That's route. Right. Hmm. Absolutely. And I, and you know, this is why I tell people, I don't like, like the term, let me help you cope. Yes. It's about overcoming. We have to learn mm -hmm. how it is that we need to become overcomers. Mm -hmm. Overcoming meaning I have gone through this experience mm -hmm. and I am a survivor. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what overcoming. It's like I'm not gonna go around it or experience it or try to just like give up, you know, mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. doomed by it. 
I'm going to overcome this thing. Okay. I'm going to not covering my pain, not like, you know, not talking about it to some, they think that that's the way of cope, you know, it's not. <laughs> It's not like not talking about doesn't mean it's not there, mm -hmm, right? It's like, mm -hmm. like, you know, the peekaboo when you're a kid, right? You pick right. a boo, and the person is still there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's still, it's still, it's still there. Mm. So it's not that, that peekaboo of life that we go through that think that makes us think that we're, we're, we're good. Mm -hmm, and oftentimes mm -hmm. trauma, if un, if, if not dealt with, will show its ugly head at the wrong time. Mm. It will show its head with a smell. It will show its head, you know, with an experience that's supposed to be memorable. It will show its head at the worst times, mm. right? Because the brain says, I remember, because it there's a lot to do with memory too in mm -hmm. the brain and how the hippocampus work and so forth, right? But 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 the, the these these senses, you know, that then brings about the memory whether it be a touch, smell, sight, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It brings out a memory. Mm -hmm. This is why we're told we need to watch, be careful. You know, the avenues of the soul are our senses. Mm, okay. okay, okay. So mm -hmm. very, very important that we recognize, you know, okay, you know, forgiveness is huge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a whole That's another topic. topic. Yes. Yes. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when we start to learn to forgive, Forgiveness says, I've dealt with this. I mean, I can go around this and just poke at it now, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and say that God has took me, taken me through. It's about me and my, his ability to help me to overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to let what happened to me five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. still be the present in my life as mm -hmm. the pain that it was then to still be the pain that it is now. Right. Um, I'll show you a slide real quick. I think this is important. When we talk about the issue of pain, um, and I'm doing a whole thing on addiction right now, and it's, it, it's very, very, very hard to talk about for, for, for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but a, a lot of trauma um, you know, that has happened, result itself in addiction for a lot of people, right? And so mm -hmm. a lot of people find it where, um, even if it's it's not an addictive behavior, but they find ways to try to cover up their pain. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line, right? Right. But pain is human um, learning system for growing. What if we saw it as such, hmm. as a, a system that we actually grow from? We you heard of growing pain? Why do we call it growing pain when muscles are or <laughs> you know the the, the bones are lengthening? Right? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Why do we call it? Why would we call it um, growing pain? Why? Because it is painful, but growth is taking place. Mm, okay. Okay. In the process. Now, what if we took these emotional pain and saw it in this light? Hmm. Have mercy. It's powerful. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very, powerful. very powerful. So that's what I do. So that's what I do. I have courses that I teach mm -hmm. on, you know, just helping people understand the mindset that we need to have after pain, the, the ideas that we have to have. The, the the mind of Christ is ultimately what we need to have, right? Mm, and then mm -hmm. fear and control and how that is the, I like, I heard that mm. once said, that is the the volume knob for pain. You know, some people I go like towards that. fear or some people go towards, I need to control. But if we turn that control knob to God, mm. Mm -hmm. it's amazing what he does by taking that experience and teaching us, developing us, and creating us to be like him. Mm, mm, amen. Yeah. Right? Amen. So, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing how we can see pain differently mm -hmm. just by the way that we start thinking. Then we can start seeing pain as growing, as mm -hmm. learning, as connection. Mm -hmm. That's what growing pain is about. Right, right. Making, making new connection, making learning experiences, and mm -hmm. taking opportunities to grow uh mm -hmm. you know if you're if you're alive you're going to go from a child to adolescent to adulthood what is that that's growing exactly that's growing. Mm -hmm. and pain does come in those those stages of life stages right right that's interesting yeah because mm -hmm. when you know with the pain like you said if you re i call it reframing you know you hear that all the time too so when you reframe things that mm -hmm. have happened to you and there's someone that says that when we have things that happen, we go, oh, this happened to me. But sometimes it's happening for you. For 
Yeah. And and it's a way of because the the we kind of have a you know life starts you know as a child like you say you go to adulthood and then sometimes we think for some reason we kind of hit this point and that's all we that's all there is to it but we're always supposed to be growing and we're yeah. very good at that when it comes to educational you yeah. know so we go back and we get a certification we go back and we get a degree okay but we are supposed to be growing emotionally we and, are and spiritually and that's so right. when we hit these stages in our adult lives and we're like you said it shows up at very inopportune times you know so, and you're like what is like where is that coming from that should make us take a pause and see that there's something that's in our in our in our psyche and our in how we deal with things and our reaction that is not mature. Yeah, and, but, but you know what? And, and we have to still be careful at the same time because we're talking about people people who have experienced trauma. Oh right? yeah, that was their fault. And so exactly. yes, it it did happen. Not oh, necessarily, yeah. and, and God allowed it to happen. I still I do believe that. Mm -hmm. While He allowed it to happen, He didn't want it to happen. Exactly. He saw the 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 potential that it can have for on an, an eternal purpose purpose right 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 mm -hmm. so the purpose can still he can use that for his good he did not want any of uh, one of us to Just experience exactly exactly none of us you mm -hmm. know this is why he told eve do not eat of that tree lest mm -hmm. you die mm -hmm. he, he the warning is there don't hurt your children you know love them you know, mm -hmm. a home should look like this. We have we have uh, councils on how to to run a home properly and how to be good parents. We have parents in class and all these things, right? That can help us to benefit us so that we don't make another person suffer, allow another person to suffer, to protect as much as we can. Mm -hmm. But while we're trying to do the protecting and everything else, mm -hmm. we know that there's an enemy that's still alive and well. So right. therefore. We are going to experience pain in that process. He's telling us when we experience pain, mm -hmm. allow me to use it for good. Right. No, I, and I understand. Right. And I agree with that totally. And I think what I was saying is that there, sometimes I think it, we still don't identify some of those things that you had on the yes. list and yes. the way it manifests itself. Yes. It, yeah. We, we, when we need to recognize that if there is something that is unhealthy, then let's start looking at what we can do to improve. And, well. and to sometimes you may have to pull out something that was a trauma that we didn't right. see it as such. Yeah. But def yeah, definitely. I, I tell, I say, tell people that God does not waste, you That's know, right. so experiences, time, even resources. And sometimes it's like, Lord, okay. So how is this going to work out for good? I have to trust that it will, but you're right. We, and we do have an enemy. Mm-hmm. People just, and that's the part people don't realize is the warfare that we're in. Um, and so God never, and I, I appreciate you bringing that out because the other thing was that I do have, have people who are dealing with a lot of trauma, yeah, a lot of challenges. They don't have answers. They don't understand yeah. why it's happening. And so there is a tendency to turn inward, but there's, yeah. there's no answer there. There's also a tendency to turn, tendency to turn away from what can actually bring you through, which is a power, which is God, we believe in, bigger than you, more yes. capable than you, and who loves you, you That's know, right. and wants to bring that 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 circumstance around to still help you to still grow in spite of it, you know. So That's I yeah, I totally I totally get what you're saying, and I appreciate you you bringing out even the other types of trauma above and beyond the aces, because it's all about, let's get well, <laughs> let's get stronger. So I do want to hear a little bit more. So what do you do? Um, we kind of touched on it. What do you do to help people? Okay. Well, let me just share a little bit more about our ministry business, as I, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, oops, you see it there. Okay. So uh, we have a ministry, a business called Mind Care, Childhood Trauma Therapy. And then um, Mind Care, a main hold focus. On, hold on. I'm seeing Zoom. I'm not Oops. seeing your. <laughs> no? Let's that's, that's that switch your slide. Yeah. All right. Can you see that now? It's there we are. Perfect. Okay, good. So that's our ministry and that's our logo, Mind Care, Childhood Trauma Therapy. Mm -hmm. And Mind Care, our main focus, obviously, is counseling. Um, 
and, and people come to us because they, they desire counseling and coaching. And so we see people literally from around the world. We have coaches that work with us. We train our coaches as well. And so people want to be trained on how to become a coach. Um, we use their stories to help bring out uh, um, their testimony to help others as well. Mm. In addition to that, we have an online course. And in our online course, oops, you can't see that. I'm not sure why. Our online course is completely online. Um, you know, people pay one time and they have access to it for six months. And we meet monthly, we discuss things. Um, there's tons of things for them to do uh, on the, the online course. And uh, our, our website, mindcare.us, will give you all that information um, and the things that you're going to be learning. We talk about, a lot about trauma. We talk about the mindset. We talk about uh, the mind-body connection as well, which is some of the things that we discussed here today. Uh, we talk about how God would desires us to be whole. How can we be whole after experiencing various things in life? Um, and so that's our online um, class. And then we, I go around and do seminars and presentations on mental health and trauma um, and addiction and things to help people see God's way of dealing with these things called the, the month. Uh, and then also, um, and this is what I brought out. Uh, we have books that we have written that I've had written. I've written um, several books, but for our adult population, uh, we mm -hmm. have the working of this mind. We have the quick mental health God for trauma. We have a curriculum for youth. So if there's homeschoolers who want, you know, parents who want to, teach their children, you know, how, what, what information should I teach mm -hmm. you about mental health? This is a curriculum for that. Um, we have the yeah. daily pill for mental health, uh, for mental fitness, I should say, something to get you going every morning, get, you know, have, a, mm -hmm. have the mind that God desires us to have with, with Bible texts and uh, inspiring and also a thought about practical. How do we make it practical? Okay. Um, and then um, we sell teas as well. Uh, come, we call it a CPR. <laughs> uh, calm, peace and rest oh. <laughs> uh, nice. over teas, okay. yeah over teas to help people deal with the mind you can have a mindset um that is of peace you know that is mm -hmm. of calmness and rest there are herbs that you know we know that actually does those things without having to go the pharmaceutical route you mm -hmm. know initially or the, you know that's as if that's the only answer um there are other uh alternative ways to deal with those things and um, that's that's what we do. Okay, very we good. always ask people to keep us in your prayer and support us. Um, mm -hmm. Share the information. We have a YouTube channel um, that's Mind Care for Trauma um, that we put out information um, on a regular basis to help people learn more about the mindset that we can have even mm -hmm. after trauma. So mm -hmm. that's Mind Care in a nutshell. Okay, uh, very good. Yes, well, that that's it's, it's a very all-encompassing approach, and I really appreciate seeing that because I just very much so, and I think we resonate on the fact that you know we have to look at the whole person, and I truly believe that if anyone is dealing with any kind of physical pain, that's right, and they're and they're not able to let go of that pain, they definitely need to dig deeper. They need yes. to dig deeper. And, yeah. um, and, and I, I just, I really do appreciate you peeling off that layer about the whole, the mindset portion mm -hmm. and that we still, you know, we can't look at that as still the stopping point. We've got to mm -hmm. even go even deeper than that. So, yeah. So what we will do, I, I will share the information, you know, where I, where I post this. Um, and so we will be having this on uh, the podcast at Spotify, and then we're going to put on YouTube, um, but I also said it, share it on Facebook. But uh, I, I really have appreciated having you here because I know that, um, like I said, when I came across that statistic about the ACEs, and I was like, this is, re oh, I say ridiculous, but I, I just, I was blown away. I was blown yeah. away. And so you've given very good insight, you know, mm -hmm. about what that can look like for people. And I know you had way much more information to share. Yeah. <laughs> But hopefully this gives people a little bit of a, a taste of, you know, because it's enough information for you to start recognizing. So That's sometimes right. you just need something to allow you to see, hmm, like I said, that aha moment of, you know, maybe I need to understand myself a little bit more. What's going on? Yeah, yeah just what's going on? And, and just understanding you all, the whole point of why I'm doing what I do here is because I understand that, you know, medications are not the answer. 
first and foremost, okay? And that you have to have a holistic, whole person approach to anything you're doing if you want to de deal with your pain. And mm -hmm. recognize that it's not always what we're understood or taught um, in just the, the, the traditional way of approaching with living life on planet earth in pain. And you see yeah. the statistics, we wanna change those statistics, but we also know you can't keep doing the same thing you're doing, expecting that things are going to improve. I know some of this sounds so different to you, but mm -hmm. you've got to do something different if you want some different results. So Dr. Phyllis Ant, say thank you. Yes. Thank you for taking, because you're so, this lady is so busy. <laughs> And so I'm appreciating you taking the time. We had a few technolo technological things here, but um, but I appreciate your, your ministry, your business ministry is what I like to call it. And I appreciate what you're doing. And I just pray for you that you will continue to be successful and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to connect at some point down the road Absolutely. again. Okay. Absolutely. So thank you for the time to allow me to just share what's what I'm passionate about and yeah, what God tell. my heart to to share with whoever, whomever would listen. And so right. I just pray that whoever is listening right now know that, you know, God truly has a purpose for you and whatever pain that you're going under, whether it be physical pain, mental pain, mm -hmm. I might even add a spiritual pain, something that, you know, mm -hmm. you just don't understand about who God is. Okay. Know that first and foremost, that you are loved. He loves mm -hmm. you with an everlasting love and he has a desire for you to be well. Above all things, he said, I desire that you be in good health and that you may prosper. And so that is my hope and prayer for all who are listening today. All right. Thank you. And thank you listeners for joining. And we will be in contact with you through another podcast episode in the near future. And if you like this, please share it because the people need to hear this information. Thanks again. Thank you, Dr. Dave. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Pain-Free Pathways, and we hope that you found valuable insights and practical tips to help you on your journey to living a pain-free, active life. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode, and if you enjoyed today's discussion, please leave us a review. Your feedback helps us to bring you the best content, and we ask that you join us next time as we continue to explore the power of natural healing and recovery. Until then, Stay well, and remember, we are dedicated